Ten. In every life, some rain must fall, and you'll get wet as your sorrow calls. Oh, the sun will rise on a brand new morn, we'll be warm and dry and freshly born. With support from Marshall County Community Foundation, Marshall County Tourism, and Judith Robert and Tom Kapazitskis. From historic downtown Plymouth, Indiana, where the Lincoln Highway and Michigan Road cross the banks of the beautiful Yellow River, it's the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Tonight we have a new show inspired by the creative and necessary concept of mask design, Faux Chic. Featured tonight in our specially outfitted studio will be our very own music producer, John Baylor, also with special guest, Ryan Meir, and Ralph Waldo Emerson, as read by me, your announcer, Jacob Moreno, and Cindy Davis reading a poem, all to the harp music of Cindy Boehner. And now, recorded live from the Wild Rose Moon Performing Arts Center, where the disinfectant flows like wine around every musical note, here's the radical rascal of all things lunar, or lunatic, your Radio Hour host, George Schricker! The river goes round, around the bend. The river goes round, round, round till the very end. And when it stops, it starts again. It won't be long till the river goes round. It won't be long till the river goes round, round and round. Well, thank you so much. Welcome to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour, everybody. We're here with our uh, guest announcer here. We've got Jacob Moreno. And uh, Jacob, uh, uh, you're from Plymouth, and we've talked a little bit about you in the past. And today, you're playing a, a rather important part here by reading uh, the works of Ralph Waldo Emerson, right? Yes, indeed. And he was sort of an interesting guy. What, what, what do you know about Ralph? Uh, well, he was an American essayist, lecturer, philosophist, and a poet. Uh, he also led the transcendentalist movement of the 19th, uh, 19th century, published dozens of essays, held hundreds of lectures across America, and his work greatly influenced the writers and poets of, of all those who followed him. Yeah, and what, what's interesting about this piece that you'll be reading today is it's a, it's sort of a forerunner of, of transcendentalism in a way, or it lays some groundwork for that, and it's an interesting critique of of uh, humans' relationship to uh, nature. Right. So it's a it's a it's a it's still very apropos to this very day. So it's an interesting piece. We'll talk a little bit more about that before we do it. Uh, but uh, it's great to have you on board. Thank you. Okay, and today our special guest is our own, very own, uh, John Baylor. And I'm so excited to have him here, and he's going to be doing a, a couple new songs. Um, and uh, John? Uh, yes, sir. John, you're, you're doing some interesting things these days. Uh, I believe you're teaching, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I got put out of the music business. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you in the music business today? Well, I am. Um, Not entirely. It's, uh, it's, it's not my living anymore. I spent uh, five years doing nothing but performing music, which is the longest I've held any job, but uh, shut down in March with the coronavirus. And went and worked in a factory for a little while, but starting uh, two days before the semester, before kids showed up, I took a job teaching at McConaughey High School. So doing my best there at uh, sophomore English classes. And we did some wonderful work together, didn't we, out on uh, out on the land? We did, and, yeah. Yeah, we were we're removing invasive species. Yeah, I still have my machete in in the back of my car, <laughs> and I know I had I, to, I, come I home, had to keep stepping away as you were using it. <laughs> I come home from from school, 
And I think, I don't know if I'm allowed to have this. I don't know if that's allowed <laughs> to be in my car or not. <laughs> we'll make it through the metal detector. Okay. Yeah, I, I better take it out of my car before this thing airs, and then I can just act like this is all a big joke. <laughs> Well, listen, I want to get down to brass tacks. You've written so many songs, and I'm just a, I'm amazed by your prolific output, um, and, I'm, and I'm, also, um, I'm also very um, impressed with uh, the tenacity with which you approach your uh, songwriting. You're a, a dedicated songwriter. Uh, ever since I've known you, it's been, it's qu it's been quite a pleasure to, uh, to be around you and to hear about songwriting from you. And now you do... You do a new uh, show with us, too. You do Moonlight with Ryan Meir, right? And right. I'll, I'll yep. talk with Ryan a little bit about that, but that's really uh, exciting. And last night, we interviewed Duncan Mitchell, a, a local poet, and that was a fascinating discussion. And, you know, your English background, because you have a, a degree in English, right? Uh, I got a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, so a couple degrees in English. So, um, you know, that really pays off for these very in-depth discussions so uh, that you're doing as an interviewer. So, you know, you're a, a very interesting guy, and it's great to have you. And I'd love to hear this song you're going to play, uh, Snowfall in Autumn, right? Yeah. Uh, and, it, and this is, is there an influence here in this song? Well, I think there's a lot of influences on anything that I write. Um, one is just a real-life moment. Um, I was playing a nursing home show, or I was on my way to one anyways, and it was, uh, it was a fall morning, and Snowfall in Autumn is the name of the song, and it, they're just like this, this gentle dusting of snow, and uh, um, young tree, 15, 20-year-old tree or something like that, that uh, the leaves were all turned for the fall, but it had this snow laying over the top of it, and, uh, and just like a really, uh, really beautiful morning, and just for this this tiny little window of time, you know, I, I, I saw this thing, uh, this tree there. And I, I've been driving through it for an hour, you know, through this morning, but there was this, this one moment where it just kind of hit me uh, what a nice morning it was. And I uh, saw it through my car window. It was in the parking lot or just off the parking lot where I was going. But like by the time, by the time I was parked, it just, it didn't have the same, the same look to it anymore. Um, just like this, this window of like the way the sunlight was hitting it, I guess, the angle that I was coming at, all those things. Um, and so that's the, uh, the real world inspiration for this song. And I came up with this melody right away at the time when I saw it. And uh, it, it kind of reminded me of a Hoagy Carmichael song. Oh, wow. And th this has been uh, a few years ago. And I only completed the song recently. And since since having that moment and coming up with the song and, and thinking it had familiarity with Hoagy Carmichael, I've, I've learned and played a lot of his music. Um, Georgia On My Mind is a Hoagy Carmichael tune. Oh. And uh, I, I do a song called Moon Country that's not very well known, but it's a tune of his that I just really love. And uh, Heart and Soul, Lazy Bones, those are all uh, Hoagy Carmichael tunes that I, that I played. And most of those are ones I learned since, since this moment, right? Right. And I thought, well, since that, since that song kind of reminded me, the melody and the words too, kind of reminded me of something that would show up in a Hoagy Carmichael song, then I would try to take what I was doing on the guitar. Uh, when I, I was coming up with the arrangements myself, but I felt like I had a particular style when I approached a Hoagy Carmichael song. And I thought, well, I don't, I don't really do my own music that way, but I'm gonna try, try to take that style and put it onto this song. And, um, and I just really enjoyed the results since as I said, I kind of left the music business. I still play guitar at home, and I do get to perform a little bit here and there. But when I'm at home, I'm kind of surprised that I'm, I'm doing very little cowboy music and country music and doing a lot of Hokey Carmichael, a lot of finger picking on the guitar. So this is, this is the style that I've really been in since, since uh, getting put out of a job.
snowfall in autumn, dusting yellow leaves. The morning light hangs in the mist, a moment of relief. Concrete surrounds me. It is ever closing in. But now and then I catch a glimpse of autumn, my old friend. I've got to touch my fingertips to a cool bubbling crick. But in these sadder, latter days, I wouldn't know where to find it. Dusting yellow leaves The morning light hangs in the mist A moment Of relief Thank you so lovely uh, and uh, you know kind of a bright melancholy behind that song it uh, has that uh, sensibility like a lot of hoagie songs so I think you really captured that really nicely um, well in that that moment that I was describing that seeing that tree yeah um, there's there's this moment of beauty but there's also this moment of um, oh it's gone now the, the windows closed because it, it was just that moment but then I, I park the car and I look at the same thing but I can't can't feel it in the same way so there's there's the there is this moment of joy and this moment of hope but there's there's loss in it as well I think the other thing that's interesting about today's program and um, uh, you know Jacob uh, Marino is going to be reading this piece from Ralph Waldo Emerson and those images from nature figure uh, uh, d directly into the piece that he'll read, but they're you know about how nature uh, and viewing of nature, being part of nature, being with nature, um, somehow fills us up and makes us whole uh, by giving us these moments of recognition. And I think this is so beautiful from that from that you know it was all stimulated from that moment, right? And then out of that came. Uh, you were w you you literally worked with sort of what was gifted you, you know, and I, I think that's really grand. The uh, um, Wor Wordsworth used the phrase "the beautiful and permanent forms of nature" in describing what he wanted to capture in his poetry, and that you know, tree and snow and mountain and river and all those things are going to speak to a person um, in in more ways and in in deeper ways than in his mind, anything else that you could reach for. Um, they're, they're part of the very, very deep human history. Yeah. Um, and in, in the song, one, one reason that I enjoy that song is because I don't, I don't explain 
what's going on. I've got this temptation to always interpret right. and, and always like, you know, cue the audience in like, this is what this means. Yeah. And in this one, I just, uh, I, I really like that I was able to just give the image and just let it sit there and, and let it speak. That's all, yeah. all I need to do. Yeah. That's grand. That's grand. Oh, well, I want to get into this next song because it's, uh, you know, I've experienced it a number of times, the, right. the, the beginning of it. And uh, from the moment I heard it, I was hoping, you know, the song would become fleshed out. So why don't you just introduce and do this song for all us? All right. Well, you mentioned the Moonlight program, and that's our, our live streaming program that we started a few months back shortly after the... Uh, the coronavirus started and we started shutting everything down. It was really Ryan's idea much more than mine and he's sort of the um, the brains behind the operation even though I'm a little bit more of the face. I just sort of caught a hold of, of his vision and ran with that. And he wanted to have something something to offer people since there weren't performances, there weren't open mics, there weren't those sort of things, but he sort of felt like here at the moon we can still be doing something. We can be giving people um, some music, some art, um, some joy and beauty. And, uh, and then you gave me the title of the program, George, and, and told me, here's, try to write a song out of this. And then you, you kept changing the name of the program, so I had to <laughs> keep scrambling to figure out how to write a theme song for it. And um, what, what I wanted to do with this song was, um, was try to capture all that. The name of the program, again, is Moonlight. And I thought, well, I'll use I'll use moonlight as um, light in a dark place, which is what um, what I think the vision for that show, what Ryan's vision for that show, really was. And speaking of Ryan, he's going to come up here and play along with me on this one. Um, when we do the the program, then he always takes a lead on this one, and I uh, I wanted him up here for for the message, which I think I, I owe in part, as I said to Ryan. And, uh, and also really enjoy his picking that he does on this. live in chains and the days are long hit my pillow without a song but tonight we rise up from where we are find the melody beneath the stars Maybe it seems like a deep, dark night. But follow me, follow me outside into the moonlight. Moonlight. a deep dark night but follow me 
follow me outside into the moonlight. Moonlight. Wow. Thank you. That is such a beautiful song. I'm so glad we developed the program. And we're lucky to have our sponsors for that, um, Gibson Insurance and, and Gibson Foundation and Encore Performing Arts and Marshall County Community Foundation. All of them have been so helpful getting that program off the ground. We're, we're lucky to have that. Yeah, we are. It's been, a, been a, a great opportunity for me. I think it's been a, a good thing for Ryan as well, although I guess you'll be able to chat with him about it because he'll be on in the second segment. Right. Um, but uh, that that conversation of, of creativity, where does where does art come from? Where does music? Where does poetry come from? Um, is a, a question that's fascinated me for a long, long time. I've, as you mentioned, I've written a lot of music. Uh, I've got this this very, very strong creative impulse, and there's there's part of me that says this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to be making music, to be making art. And there, there's another part, of course, that says, this is what life is all about. Exactly. exactly. And, uh, and the, the pull and the tension of, of those two things, I just, I just find to be like this. Um, there, there's no bottom. I mean, you can keep digging into that and, there is and always right. find more. And your work is so life-affirming, and I really appreciate it. It's been a, a great, uh, one of my great pleasures working with you these last uh, five years, really. So uh, that's a pleasure. We're, we're going to talk to you. In the, in the last section of the, the show, too. But coming up next, we have a, a song by one of our very own in-house producers, Ryan Meir, who was just up on stage. And after that, we'll be featuring Ralph Waldo Emerson, read by our very own in-house announcer, Jacob Moreno, along with Cindy Davis reading a beautiful poem, both of them accompanied by harp from Cindy Boner. So thank you so much. With support from Judith Robert and Tom Kapasinskis, Marshall County Foundation, Marshall County Tourism, and the Friends of Wild Rose Moon, you're listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Coming to the stage now is uh, Ryan Meir, who has uh, written a wonderful ballad. I, when, when I heard this, he was singing it for me, and um, I heard it, and I thought, wow, this sounds like it came right out of Ireland or, or uh, uh, Ar Irish or English ballad tradition. Um, and, um, and I just love the whole uh, message behind it. I thought it was really uh, lovely. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got this this song going, Ryan. And Ryan is one of our producers of Moonlight. We just mentioned that in the yeah, last segment. I will. I'm trying to get a good shot here. Oh, okay. That's right. Uh, Ryan is actually directing himself or producing himself right at the moment on Mevo camera. So, uh, Because he's also a, a Mevo operator here and produces that on an iPad and uh, mixes the sound for our Moonlight program. 
All right, so about the song. That's okay. Um, kind of weird story about this song. <laughs> I, uh, the music, of course, is like a... Oh, I'm getting directed here. The music oh. is with a few of them I've had for a long time. And I would just kind of play it as a warm-up before like a band practice or whatever. And um, I injured my elbow at work a while ago, and I, was, I had to go take an MRI, have an MRI. And I, uh, if you haven't had an MRI, um, it's not a very big space to be in. So I was kind of wedged in this machine, and it's making all these noises. And as it's going, this rhythm starts to happen. And the name Betsy Becker kind of just came to me. And uh, I started coming up with lyrics. I was like, I can't write the song in an MRI. I can't write it down. I'm not going to remember it. <laughs> but then I was stuck there for about another 30 minutes. So I just went over and over it. And I had about half of it written when I got out, got out to my Jeep, drove home, and I wrote them down. And uh, it's uh, there's a show called Peaky Blinders. It's lightly inspired by that show, just about a scene where a, a woman comes into a bar and she says she wants to sing a song and she's told she can't. And I thought, well, what would happen if she was given the opportunity and she just sang something that everybody kind of got and uh, just went from there? As far as the style goes, I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> Betsy Becker went into a club, she wanted to sing a song. Bartender said there's no singing in here, she said, oh, but you'll be singing along. He said, you can sing, and if they don't join you, you can turn right around She said when I saw you You'll be wishing That I was from this town Betsy Becker stepped to the stage Carrying only her words She started singing Everyone stopped drinking And they sang right along with her Bartender never heard the like before He looked toward the stage His frown went away And his heart lifted up As a tear ran down his face Betsy Becker finished her song Everyone singing with her No one had ever heard it before But they knew every single word Bartender wiped a tear from his eye and asked, is this song true? She said, even if it wasn't for me, it's clear that it was for you. He spoke of a woman, a man, and a boy. Each one took some of his love. It wasn't exactly the song that she sang, but she knew that it was close enough.
Becker left the bar that night, never to return. Everyone's singing pieces and parts of her beautiful heart-breaking tune. Thank you. Interesting. Another song about uh, about uh, a kind of um, uh, union, you know, that is created between souls uh, when this uh, act happens, you know, mm -hmm. and this uh, the kind of sorrows that are shed through uh, songwriting and uh, and how they transform us all, and how we hear our own story replayed, and how important that is that humans remind each other that we are we we go through s sorrow together right it's a beautiful beautiful song it was interesting is it on the moonlight last night duncan had mentioned he touched on the exact same thing i was talking about to where somebody can uh relate to what to your writing and it's not exactly right but it's it's enough yeah. to get you to either get over something or understand something more or Right, and uh, that got into a, a brief discussion about writers explaining the meaning behind things, and I used to get kind of ticked if a writer didn't wouldn't explain a song, and now I kind of get it because if you explain it, then that kind of whoever that song may have helped, it might take them might take that away from them. Right. So you leave it open, and it just more people can enjoy it then. Yeah. So. Well, it's a great song about uh, about the and, uh, and I love hearing about the creative process that that led to it. That's terrific. Well, we now shift our focus uh, to another kind of uh, uh, creative force with Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, the uh, early American. Uh, well, I guess in the 1800s he lived, didn't he? Do you have his dates? His uh, dates? He lived in the 1800s. Yes. Eight early 1800s, yeah. right? And uh, and also his work, uh, transcendentalism, was uh, somewhat a foundation for some of the, uh, you know, some of the ideas of the abolitionist movement, which are v very interesting. And um, so it's nice to hear this is a, a critique of uh, of sort of our relationship to nature, and uh, I think it's it's an interesting one. I think it's a uh, it's later um, later uh, kind of echoed, I think, in a person like. A, uh, David Bohm, who uh, the physicist who uh, who also has similar kinds of critiques uh, from a different perspective. So uh, read away. Let's uh, wait. Wait just a minute. Also, Cindy Boner is going to play this most beautiful harp. And I want to before I start talk to Cindy just a little bit. When did you start playing the harp? I started in April of twenty. I started in April of twenty seventeen. April of 2017. Mm -hmm. That's not that long ago. Well, I have a, other instruments that I play, so that helps quite a lot. Um, I had good keyboard experience, and while it doesn't transfer directly, um, it, it helped quite a lot, the coordination. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure that's true. And um, But there, it's a different, f you know, your fingers are, are all right on the strings, where in a yeah, piano, and you that's know. that's actually what I love about it. I, there's something about the vibrations that you can feel when you play that really touch something in me. And so it, 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 it compelled me to, to keep at it, to keep going, because it was such a, a, a healing sound for me, I suppose you could say. Um, the, the vibrations that I felt as I was playing kind of gets it, into you, I suppose. It sounds silly, but that's... No, it it's does. really, a, it's a marvelous instrument. Yeah, it's beautiful. Just marvelous. I, I want to get down here and talk to Cindy Davis, too, for just a minute. Uh, Cindy, you have a background in English yourself, wrote a, uh, a thesis on Samuel Taylor Coleridge, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, on the rhyme, of, uh, the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner? I wrote on the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, yes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, water, water everywhere. And all the boards did shrink, water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Yeah. Now, uh, it, it, he was such a, an incredible uh, a poet. Um, and uh, th that work, I remember being assigned in, uh, I believe it was seven, no, no, it was in high school. Yeah. Uh, high school junior English, maybe? Does that sound about right? That sounds right. Yeah. So it was quite something. When I, I remember when I read it, it was, 
it was so dramatic. It is very dramatic. It's a long narrative poem about the sort of search of the soul for a home and uh, the lostness that many of us feel. Yeah, yeah, and, and especially during this time of COVID, it can be very difficult for people, I think. And uh, so these, you know, that kind of search, uh, you know, is, is part of the human condition. It's one of those things that unites us all, like the like the woman in the bar singing. Yeah. Uh, now, when you first read this poem by Cindy uh, Boner, what did you think? I, I just... I just love this poem. Uh, she talks about reflections, uh, memories of her uh, grandmother, she tells me, but again, left that open so we can resonate with it um, in our own way, as Ryan was just saying. Leave it open. Well, I can't wait to hear this. This is a, a combination piece uh, that sort of just came organically together, and it's uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and and the very contemporary poet, Cindy Boner. This is a poem by Ralph Waldo Emerson entitled, Blight, give me truths, for I am weary of the surfaces and die of inanition. If I knew only the herbs and simples of the wood, rue, sinkfoil, gill, vervain and agrimony, blue vetch and trillium, hawkweed, sassafras, milkweeds and murky brakes, quaint pipes and sundew, and rare and virtuous roots, which in these woods draw untold juices from the common earth, untold, unknown, and I could surely spell their fragrance and their chemistry apply by sweet affinities to human flesh, driving the foe and establishing the friend. Oh, that were much, and I could be a part of the round day, related to the sun and planted world, and full executor of their imperfect functions. But these young scholars who invade our hills, bold as the engineer who fells the wood, and traveling often in the cut he makes, love not the flower they pluck, and know it not. And all their botany is Latin names. The old men studied magic in the flowers, and human fortunes in astronomy, and an omnipotence in chemistry, preferring things to names. For these were men, were Unitarians of the United World, and wheresoever their clear eye beams fell, they caught the footsteps of the same. Our eyes are armed, but we are strangers to the stars, and strangers to the mystic beast and bird, and strangers to the plant and to the mine. The injured elements say, not in us, and night and day, ocean and continent, fire, plant and mineral say, not in us, and hotly return stare for stare, for we invade them impiously for gain. We devastate them unreligiously and coldly ask their pottage, not their love. Therefore, they shove us from them, yield to us only what to our griping toil is due. But the sweet affluence of love and song, the rich results of the divine consents of man and earth, of world beloved and lover, the nectar and ambrosia are withheld. And in the midst of the spoils and slaves, we thieves and pirates of the universe shut out daily to a more thin and outward rind, turn pale and starve. Therefore, to our sick eyes, the stunted trees look sick, the summer short. Clouds shade the sun which will not tan our hay, and nothing thrives to reach its natural term. And life, shorn of its venerable length, even at its greatest space, is a defeat, and dies in the anger that it was a dupe. And in the highest noon and wantonness is early frugal, like a beggar's child. Even in the hot pursuit of the best aims and prizes of ambition, checks its hand, 
like alpine cataracts, frozen as they leaped, chilled with a miserly comparison of the toy's purchase with the length of life. Reflections by Cynthia Boner. I thought of you today as I peeled the apples and sliced them into the pan, remembering how your hands deftly cut away the peel, the slices falling so quickly to be covered with the sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, all so quickly. And I thought how the time speeds away each moment already a memory, and what remains are reflections. In a different space, a different time, ripples like those in water extending out and shimmering with calls to remember, forming a mosaic of what once was. Mere glimpses of the past, yet recalling the moments, the echoes that become new moments, new memories. There are reflections of you in my own actions, and I wonder how the moments that I reflect to others will be remembered, how the slices of my life will be seen and remembered. And it gives me pause. Your actions, my actions, touching others, becoming a part of the path another walks. I hope, I pray, that our reflections are good and cause no pain or hurt or resentment or anger, that we can reflect kindness and hope and love. I think of you now as I peel the apples. That was grand. Thank you so much, Cindy Boner, Cindy Davis, Ryan Meir, and Jacob Moreno. We're so lucky to have all of this talent right here with us and close by. Um, uh, up next, we're going to talk with John Baylor again. <laughs> Marshall County Foundation, Marshall County Tourism, and the Friends of the Wild Rose Moon. You're listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Welcome back to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. We are here with our uh, music producer and uh, a songwriter extraordinaire, John Baylor, um, who, my gosh, John, you have a, you've had a, you've been in your family band, right? Uh, well, just a little bit brief bio yeah. here would be, uh, you've been in... Uh, well, in I started playing, uh, playing guitar when I was a junior in high school, and... Um, did work with the church worship team a little bit. I didn't really know how to play guitar hardly when I was performing or playing with them. Um, and after I graduated from high school, I started playing with my, my family band, which is a bluegrass, old country, and western swing band. Um, and, and made real big strides as a musician during that. But uh, when I really took off was when I started playing with the Stampede String Band. And uh, we, we put on a, a lot more shows than what I ever did with my family band. The family band practiced which you would think is a way to get good at music, but, uh, but really get in front of a crowd um, where you're putting something on the line, I guess, when yeah. you're in front of the audience. And, and there's, there's this more urgency to, to do your best. Right, 
and, uh, and, and I was also kind of carrying the band a little bit more. I could hide behind other people when I was playing with, with my parents' band. But in, in the Stampede String Band, I was kind of the guy who had to drag the rest of them along <laughs> uh, as far as musically. I mean, and they, they contributed terrific things that, I mean, um, a, as far as like booking shows and, and sort of establishing the image of the band and, and uh, doing a lot of the songwriting. I mean, the other guys did a lot of good things. Um, and, and things that really made a difference in the direction of my life. Uh, but musically, like I say, I was the guy that was sort of carrying it, which was, which was real good for me. Well, I want you to carry it right now for us, because we'd love to hear another song. Um, I can't wait. I kind of, uh, there's a part of me, I know I'm standing almost perfectly still right now, but there's a part of me that's squirming inside, waiting for the next song. Well, um, There'd probably be a couple of parts of me squirming <laughs> uh, for this song right here. For one, um, this is about uh, a, a student of mine. Um, I, I worked at a therapeutic boarding school for a few years, and uh, I didn't I didn't have this kid in any of my classes I was teaching there at the time. Uh, and this was uh, in the Dominican Republic, but it was a school for American troubled teenagers and I, I didn't have this guy as a, a student but it was a small school and you, you know you know everybody that works there and everybody that's a student there and um, we uh, we had a, a day where we um, we went and played under a waterfall for a while just uh, sort of like a little fun day field trip kind of thing and uh, and this is sort of about that day um, and he, um, maybe five years ago, this kid passed away. And uh, with with all these all these students, when they they get all the program, they're there because they've got problems in their lives, um, mistakes that they're making, trouble they're getting into, and and a lot of them get out and and live a better life. But a lot of them. Um, the, the first thing they do before they get back on track is they, they fall back into their old habits again. But, um, but hopefully you've, you've equipped them with what it takes to, um, to recognize their own mistakes now and, and to correct them. And, and that's sort of the pattern that a lot of the students go through. So if, if a kid gets out, and I, I, don't, I don't happen to have any knowledge of, of what this kid was doing with his life afterwards, so there's no, no kind of comment on that. But um, if, if a, a kid gets out and um, winds up in prison or, or, you know, something like that, then you always have this attitude of, um, well, just wait. We'll just see, see how this goes. Um, there's, there's always hope for this person. Um, and it's, uh, it's just a, a very different thing when, when that person passes away and they don't get the chance to, um, to live out a better life. And uh, that's one of the reasons I'll be squirming during this thing. Um, and I was debating just musically whether I wanted to pull this one off or not. Um, I've uh, I had it in my mind to go with this song, and it's uh it's just it's pitched a little high for me. And there's there's ways I can change it and play it in a different spot. But um, but the guitar is too important on the song, and anything I do that tries to change it, um, uh, I, I'd rather have the guitar sound like it does than have my voice sound like it does which is usually not my priority but uh, on this one I'll 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 go ahead and stretch a little bit Lord he was a troubled soul so take him to the waterfall his 15 years had not been kind, but rivers give us peace of mind. A life is a frail thing, ever on the edge of breaking. A life is a beautiful thing, a life is a frail thing. Oh, 
cried out like a dying man I took him by the hand You cannot fight against the waves But look, here is a better way When the falls were out of sight He said I saved his life Life is a frail thing Ever on the edge of breaking A life is a beautiful thing A life is a frail thing A heart attack at 21 a senseless thing his life was done every life we ever saved we lay down broken in the grave but i remember most of all that day beneath the waterfall Life is a frail thing Ever on the edge of breaking A life is a beautiful thing A life is a frail thing So beautiful. I'm so glad you, uh, you went for that. That's a, that's a very moving song. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, um, a lovely example of how the songwriting is a way of processing uh, our emotions, our relationship to our life, and telling, telling uh, a story, but a story that uh, connects us with others. And uh, that's a graceful, beautiful song. Thank you. Because it does that so well. Um, yeah, I'm. I just marvel. I'm so pleased that um, you know this seems like the perfect time. We've, you've, you've held reins on the, sh on the show before, a few years ago, and it's just uh, a marvel um, to to be watching you grow as a songwriter. It's it's been a, a real pleasure. Um, tell us, tell us, uh, do another song for us and tell us about it. Um, well, this one, I, I don't know if you'll see growth exactly because this is a song from uh, before I met you. Um, uh, uh, another song dealing with relationship, but the more, uh, this is the relationship that more often makes it into songwriting. Um, a, uh, a breakup toward the end of my time in college. And I, I wrote a couple of songs um, processing it, I guess you could say. And at the time, I I wasn't particularly impressed with this one. I thought it was it was decent, but there were there were other songs that I'd written at that time, other songs I'd written on the subject that that kind of grabbed me more at the time. But um, as as years went by, this is the one that that I keep going back to over and over again. And maybe it has something to do with what I'd said earlier about. Um, not explaining things more than I need to. Um, this song has a very simple melody, very simple images, and and those the the images I guess are are part of the reason why I keep returning to this song. I think that's all I got to say on this one. Today I drove along a country highway, stillness reaching far, and I recall 
Just like it was yesterday, the magic of the hour when we met. Lovely to leave us with a, a kind of song that um, we all have, uh, often many of us have uh, memories of our first loves. And, uh, and they transform and shape us. Goethe said that, right, about love. Uh, I think he said love, uh, we are transformed and fashioned by what we love, I think he said. I remember that quote. Um, well, in... in uh I don't know if this is uh, the experience for everybody, but I felt like a lot of the the pain of missing somebody really was um, the pain of resenting somebody, um, somebody that's hurt you, and like you harbor all these negative emotions towards somebody that you don't want to have negative emotions toward. Um, and that's, uh, the song is not, until the the very last words of it, it's not a song about forgiveness at all. It's a song about missing somebody. Right. And then and then that that last line creeps in there, and that's for me that's uh, the revelation of this was the struggle all along is is the struggle to forgive somebody. Huh. That's beautiful. Just gorgeous. Um. Well, uh, we have had a really great radio show today, don't you think? Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> Yeah. Is there any th last thing you'd like to say before we sign off here? Because we've we've done some great work. Oh, I don't know. You're uh, you're putting me on the spot here, but uh, um, I'm uh, just grateful to be a part of of Wild Rose Moon and uh, Moonlight and the radio show and all of it, and uh, grateful to have to have someone in in you, George, that that has supported me every step of the way since I first came in here um, and given me a lot of opportunities to to do what I, I love to do and what I want to do and what I want to get better at. And uh, you were talking about the, the progress that you've seen in me as a musician, but a lot of that comes from um, from what you've given to me in this place. Well, the feeling is absolutely mutual, Ms. Mr. Baylor. I feel that you have... Uh, taught me much about being and uh, about uh, uh, 
your your fine relationship to your creative spirit has nurtured me tremendously so thank you so much and uh, thank you all for joining us today on the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. I want to thank, um, first, oh, you, you play the song, don't you? <laughs> I think we get going. So, uh, there we go. Start over. Okay, cut. Okay. Are you ready now? Yes. Okay, and that was a moment with Nate. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Are are you doing okay on time? Do I need to speak for 30 more seconds or something? No, well, you can't. No, no, we're fine. Okay, because if I did... Yeah? (laughs) If if I did have to speak for 30 more seconds, then then the thing I would say would be... um, it, mostly in reference to that that last song, the one before the um, the song about the waterfall, you were talking about my relationship with the the creative process, and I do write a lot of music, and I'm I'm sort of always on the lookout for for something to to write about. I've got the impulse anyways. I'm going to be writing yeah, things, right, and I want right. to make sure um, I want to make sure it's about something that matters to me, and if I if I have something, like I don't, I don't think of myself as a really emotional person, not real easily moved. And if something gets to me, then, um, then I, I hang on to it because, because I think that's something that, if it can get to me, it can get to anybody, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> My attitude about it. Um, and so, uh, so a story like that one um, with that former student of mine um, is something that, that was a, painful experience for me and and I mean a painful thing now to to reflect on um but that's that's the reason I want to deal with it for for my own sake and and I I think that's also where where there's something that matters to somebody else and that the previous song um the breakup song of course there's lots and lots of breakup songs but it's it's uh um something has moved the artist and moved them in a real way and it's it's well um, Robert Frost said, "No tears in the writer, no tears in the reader." And if if uh, if I find tears in me or I find pain in me, then then again, that's uh, that's what's going to speak to the audience. Take us home, John. <laughs> With support from Judith Robert and Tom Kepasinskis, Marshall County Community Foundation, Marshall County Tourism, and the Friends of the Wild Rose Moon, you're listening to the Wild Rose Moon Radio Hour. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. And special uh, thanks to our special guest, upon whom so much depends here, our music producer, John Baylor, Ryan Meir for his beautiful ballad, our announcer, Jacob Moreno, Ralph Waldo Emerson for being Ralph and Cindy Boner for her beautiful poem and harp playing and thanks to Cindy Davis for her multisyllabic utterances of vocal design. Thanks also to Nate Butler, co-producer and sound engineer, our associate producer, Katie DeGooch, Ryan Meir, our video producer, Matthew Bergmoser, our photographer, Howard Gibbs, our alpha male, stage manager, Marsha Heinzberger, our set designer, Jean Pazdurka, Jennifer Reed, hospitality team, and Mark Woolever, our resident Buddha and plexiglass engineer, and our geek squadron leader, J.R.R.R.R.R. Berger. So when you think You've lost that light Oh, pain and heartache Fill your soul with strife Just remember As you're tumbling down It won't be long Till the river goes round The The river river goes goes round 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 the bend The river goes round, round, round round Till the very end. end Oh, yeah, it 
till the river goes round and round and round, my friends. I think that's a wrap. I think uh, when.